Hi, I'm Ron Squire. Welcome to highlights of the 2013 Formula Sim Racing World Trophy. Round 5 is the Canadian Grand Prix set around the circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal. One of the most shortest circuits on the calendar, this circuit is configured with slow speed corners and chicanes on a relatively narrow track. Almost resembling the street circuit, the barriers run very close to the track here at Canada, leaving little room for error. Qualifying produced some stunning results with some drivers achieving their personal bests. Franz Schneider takes his second pole of the year with Renz Kopp in his best position so far with Bad Piscara UN. Barnes Bonnard gets third, getting a Nemesis racing car into Q2 for the first time this year. Daniel Kiss gets fourth and Carlos Martin in fifth with Marshall Thomas in sixth and Alessio Campus in seventh. Mark Corbett gets eighth and Cesc Kelly has moved from Anshu Racing to faster speed for his personal best time in ninth place. And on his debut, but Benjamin Chong on his debut for Bradley Piscari went rounds off the top ten with FSR returnee Thomas Coriala gets eleventh in his team at Sisu Grand Prix. Kena Basso gets 11th with Piotti in 13th, Gaillard in 14th in his second Grand Prix, Edouard Corre in 15th. It has been a bad session for both PS Star teams, Green and Orange, with Vacqua in 18th, Siki in 20th, went behind him in 21st, and Valenti in 23rd, ahead of new right night recruits, it's Giovanni Chini in last place because of a back of the grid penalty that he got from China and hasn't served it since. To the race start and everyone got off the line cleanly and the one who had the most uh, fantastic start was Franz Schneider who uh, defended his first position from Renz Klopp. Barnard spawned now trying to keep a third position for Martin but Martin prevailed as they went into the first corner. Mark Albers went wide but uh, as positive he went past Marshall Thomas for his position. Barnard was holding position but not for long as Martin tried to make an inside pass him on him on the second chicane but unfortunately he, he lost places to both Kiss and Alberts and all was on under attack from Marshall Thomas. Meanwhile Mark Albers was trying to find a way past Kiss as they go down into the third chicane but Mark Albert, uh, and Mark Albers had no difficulty passing the twister driver and that uh, leads himself into third place. Things will get worse for Daniel Kiss as he was hit behind by Marshall Thomas going into the hairpin and therefore Kiss dropped down all the way down to 6th place. Behind there was more carnage ensuing with Pekena Bastel just hitting the back of Benjamin Chog causing mayhem behind and Kevin Ziggy went across the grass losing positions. Pekena Bastel recovered albeit last. At the end of the first lap the top 6 looks like this. Franz Schneider leads from Renz Klopp in 2nd with Mark Albers in 3rd, Carlos Martin in 4th Bonus Varnar just uh, has been Siskelio in 5th and Daniel Kiss down in 6th position. Giovanni Kini's race seems to be going well. He, was, he moved alongside Arsenal while going down the uh, long straight. He, he was trying to his best to get, uh, try to overtake King Arsenal but then he finally did it and moved it up into 15th place. Giovanni's next victim was uh, uh, Volante as we went down into the hairpin they touched on one occasion but forcing his land to go wide and give Giovan. Then he made a fantastic overtake on Arnold Lubricek into the uh, second chicane to go up into 13th place. Daniel Kiss's afternoon seems to be getting worse and worse when he was touched by Balance Bonnard coming out to the hairpin and then Balance Bonnard forced him in, uh, near, the, near the barriers, causing him to uh, go wide, touch the barrier for a sec, but though he was able to recover, albeit behind Piotti, who just came up behind him. Lap 11 and Franz Schneider was one of the first front runners to pit, uh, just uh, losing the lead temporarily to uh, Lenz Klopp, who holds on to the lead for only one lap before coming in for his first pit stop of the day. And with Mark Albert's coming up just behind him, this means that Franz Schneider will retake the lead of the race with Banner Bonnard in second and uh, Carlos Martin, who had an impressive race, up into third. Mark Albers will try in all his might to help him get back up into the field and back in contention for the lead of the race. For example, he was behind Piotti for about a couple of laps. He tried the second chicane, but unfortunately he failed. However, that on run down down into the third chicane, he, he tried on the inside and it worked like a charm. I was immediately back in contention for some race points. Back in the midfield, Giovanni Kini seems to be having an OK race after starting from the back of the grid. But unfortunately, he lost all control in the brakes while going down into turn 1 and slid helplessly into the path of Sis Kelly, Chong and Jack Bakwa. Sis Kelly was able to continue one, but unfortunately for Chong and Sis Bakwa, it was not to be. Benjamin Chong managed to continue one for only about a couple more metres before retiring just after the first chicane. 
Tobacco tried to continue on as well, but unfortunately he went into the first chicane, lost control of all the car and slammed into the barriers, ending a disappointing weekend for the Belgian. Lap 23 and Miguel Valante was one of the midfielders, the first ones to stop. He went into the pits to change his tyres and at the end of the, end of this pit stop, he was overtaken by two people by the names of Kena Basel and Arnold Lebrucek, only just relegating him down, all the way down to 13th place. However, Valanti had no problem trying to overtake the Arnold. He went in down into the uh, long straight for the hairpin and he got overtaken the Frenchman with an inside pass to move back up into 12th place. Barnabas Bonner hoping for a podium finish, but unfortunately going down into the second chicane, he lost all connection and all hope for a point finish. Another retirement of the day was from Kena Basel, who uh, span out and then uh, breached his car and retired from the race. Lap 38 and Mark Orbis was one of the front runners to make its final pit stop. He went into the pit, so changed his tyres and only just rejoined in fourth, just behind Renskop and Carlos Martin. In his second race, Barzal's Gallia's bad day is about to end thanks to collision to the barrier when he was distracted by Miguel Valanti trying to recover. Back in the front, Carlos Martin tried his best to defend his third position from Mark Orbitz. However, all the way down to the first corner, Carlos Martin went wide and losing the position to Mark Orbitz, immediately promoting the Dutchman up into third place. Arnold Lubitschek looks to be on course for points finish until his engine decided to blow in a big way, just about five laps from the end. A absolutely disappointing blow for the Frenchman. Miguel Valanti also had problems, but though this time it was brake problems, as he went into the hairpin and lost traction out of the corner, causing him to slam bang it right into the tyre wall. He was able to continue on and go back to the pit, however, being now far behind, he decided to call it quits and retired straight after the hairpin. The next one was Edward Corey, who slammed straight into the wall and retiring from it. And to top of the list of retirements, Daniel Kiss uh, lost traction going into the final chicane and uh, is parking his car on top of the anti cut, causing him to retire. Ron Schneider may have disappeared off into the distance, but third place hasn't finished yet. Coming across the back marker, Klaus Martin went into the inside of Mark Corbus to immediately take the last podium spot, which we he will hold all the way to the first line. Taking a dominating win for the second time this year, and quite a dominant one too, Franz Schneider wins the Canadian Grand Prix with ease. Renskop takes second position, equaling his best performance so far this year, as a much needed points for Piscara UN. And for the third place, Carlos Martin manages to hold his third all the way to the third line for Mark Corbett. Mark Orbis was disappointed to get fourth today, but though who were playing these results here now leads the Avis Championship. Jonathan Holmes gets a good performance today after qualifying quite badly down the grid, and Alessio Campos gets sixth for Crown 7 Netrex. Valerino is in seventh with Piotti in eighth, Azuran in ninth with Coriala just rounding up the top ten. And the final point scorer is Miguel Valanti, even though he retired with brake problems just about a couple of laps from the end. This race was also marked by controversy when the stewards decided to put the hammer down when they were less impressed by Giovanni Chiellini's tactics. They decided to give him a one race ban, forcing him to set out of the British Grand Prix. Giovanni will hopefully learn from this and hoping to a much more consistent drive in the future. So as mentioned before, Mark Corbett now leads the trophy from Ben Testing, who was unable to participate today, but Mark Corbett leads from Ben Testing by just 8 points. Carlos Martin keeps on going with his strong form, uh, but only 3 points behind Ben Testing, with Franz Schneider now in 4th, now tied with Marcus Zippoli, who has just been absent now for over 2 rounds, tied with him with both of them on 110 points. Renz Klopp is not far behind with his strong performance today, just about 7 points behind both Schneider and Zippoli and Valerino has had a brush off with Holmes and Volante just behind in 9th and 10th. To the Constructors and Go Speed still lead Banchi Piscara by 57 points. Positive Sim Racing are continuing with their strong showing thanks to Carlos Martin's efforts. Butter GP is now up into all 4th uh, after overtaking uh, Hacksball Racing who is now down in 5th. PSR Team Orange is 6th with Banchi Piscara 3 in 7th. PSR Team Green is 8th with Night Racing in 9th. And GS Racing despite their poor, poor performance here with Marshall Thomas in 10th place. 
The next race is the British Grand Prix, and you can watch that race live as it happens on SimRace.tv on the 16th of June. For qualifying, 11.35 GMT at the race at 12 noon. In Thailand, you can check out our forums at racedepartment.com for more latest league information, as well as check out our main inside www.formal-racing.net. Check us out on both Facebook and on Twitter, as well as visit, visit our Fantasy League for a chance to first master prizes. So join in today if you want to have a chance at it. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. I'm Ron Squire. Enjoy this for the next round of the 2013 Formula Sim Racing World Trophy.